Welcome to our channel, where we dive deep into the fascinating world of technology and explore the latest developments that shape our digital landscape. Today, we will discuss an intriguing saga surrounding Apple's beloved smartwatches and the ongoing battle over pulse oximetry technology. Get ready to unravel the complexities of patents, legal disputes, and the potential future of this vital health monitoring feature. Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive technology that measures the oxygen saturation levels in your blood. This vital health metric provides insights into your overall well-being and can aid in the early detection of various medical conditions. Apple introduced this feature in its smartwatches, allowing users to monitor their blood oxygen levels conveniently from their wrists. However, this innovative implementation caught the attention of Massimo, a medical technology company that holds patents related to pulse oximetry. Massimo alleged that Apple infringed upon its patented technology, setting the stage for a legal battle that would have far-reaching consequences. In a move that sent shockwaves through the tech industry, Massimo filed a lawsuit against Apple, accusing the tech giant of infringing on several patents related to pulse oximetry. This legal action resulted in a significant ruling by the United States International Trade Commission, ITC, which imposed an import ban on certain Apple Watch models in the United States. The ban specifically targeted the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2, two of Apple's latest and most advanced smartwatch models at the time. This decision dealt a blow to Apple's ability to sell these watches with the blood oxygen monitoring feature in the United States market. In response to the ITC's ruling, Apple faced a difficult choice, either remove the pulse oximetry feature from the affected Apple Watch models or find a workaround to comply with the ban. The company ultimately decided to disable the blood oxygen sensor in the Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2 for the United States market. This decision had a significant impact on consumers, as the blood oxygen monitoring feature is a highly sought after and valuable health tracking tool. Many Apple Watch users were disappointed by the removal of this functionality which had become an integral part of their health and fitness routine. To comply with the import ban, Apple implemented a software-based solution that effectively disabled the blood oxygen sensor in the affected Apple Watch models when paired with an iPhone. This meant that users in the United States would no longer have access to the pulse oximetry feature and attempting to access it would display a warning message. However, this approach raised concerns from Massimo who argued that the feature could potentially be reactivated through software updates or jailbroken devices. Massimo advocated for stricter restrictions, preferably at the hardware level, to prevent any possibility of circumventing the ban. According to recent developments and information from the United States Customs and Border Protection, CBP Apple may have a chance to reintroduce the blood oxygen monitoring feature in the affected Apple Watch models. However, the timeline for this reactivation is uncertain and could potentially take several years. One possibility is that Apple could reactivate the pulse oximetry feature through a software update as early as August 2028, when the patents in question are set to expire. This would allow Apple to offer the full functionality of its smartwatches without infringing on Massimo's intellectual property rights. Alternatively, if Apple's appeal against the ITC's ruling is successful, the blood oxygen feature could be reinstated sooner than the patent expiration date, However, this legal process can be lengthy and complex, leaving Apple Watch users in a state of uncertainty. As we approach the conclusion of our discussion, it's important to consider the various paths that Apple could take to resolve this issue. One option is to reach a settlement with Massimo, which could involve licensing agreements or other forms of compensation. However, reports suggest that Massimo's CEO remains open to discussions but hasn't engaged with Apple yet, making a settlement seem unlikely at the moment. Another avenue is Apple's appeal against the ITC's ruling. If successful, this could pave the way for the reinstatement of the blood oxygen monitoring feature sooner than expected. However, legal battles of this magnitude can be drawn out, and the outcome is never certain. Finally, there's the option of waiting for the patents to expire in August 2028. While this may seem like a long wait for Apple Watch users, it could ultimately lead to the full restoration of the pulse oximetry feature without any legal complications. That's all for our in-depth exploration of the Apple Watch Pulse Oximetry Saga. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights and a better understanding of the complexities surrounding this issue. 
If you found this content informative and engaging, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share it with your fellow tech enthusiasts. Now, we'd love to hear your thoughts. In the comments below, let us know if you believe Apple should pursue a settlement with Massimo or continue with their appeal. Do you think the wait until 2028 is justifiable? Or should Apple find a quicker resolution? Share your opinions and let's continue this fascinating discussion. Remember, staying informed about the latest tech news and developments is crucial in our rapidly evolving digital world. By subscribing to our channel, you'll never miss out on our insightful and engaging content. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.